Hello, this is Tom Lippincott with Modern Jazz Noise. Today we're going to be uh, looking at my brand new pedal board. The last episode I gave kind of one last look at my old big pedal board, the huge one, and I've downsized it uh, considerably and I'm really happy with it. So let's jump right in and take a look at what's going on with the new one. So here we are with the new pedal board. Uh, as you can see, if you saw the previous episode, a lot of the same pedals, in fact, most of the same pedals are on this one as before, with a couple of conspicuous ones missing, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the first thing I want to mention is how thrilled I am at how uh, well this pedal board has been working out. It's significantly smaller and even more importantly lighter than the previous Pedal Train Pro. This one is also a Pedal Train, it's the Classic 2. And um, also one thing that I didn't mention in the previous video was about the power supply I was using, I don't think. The Pedal Train Pro board in the previous video I was using the Eventide Power Factor 2, which I'd had for many years. Uh, originally I had actually their Power Factor 1. Both of those are made by this company, Chiox, but they made this these power supplies specifically for Eventide because Eventide uses kind of an unusual power and they had multiple outputs designed specifically for the Eventide pedals. And originally I had two Eventide pedals on my board and I you know, needed to have those Eventide specific outlets for them. Um, I ended up having some trouble with the Power Factor 1. Uh, certain rooms that I would plug into the electricity, there'd be weird noise and stuff that would happen. And uh, I was, it was kind of driving me crazy. And I ended up getting the Power Factor 2 a few years later, and that seemed to solve all those problems. Never had any more of those problems with it. But when I got this board, uh, I realized that some of the more recent power supplies are a little lighter weight. and uh, I mentioned in the previous video that I was one of the uh, pedals that was going to be leaving the board actually was this one right here, the Manico Looper 16 second delay. Well, what do you know? It's on there still. And that's because I got this other power supply, the Chiox DC7, that has enough power, enough outlets for me to add this on here as well. And I was able to squeeze it in. So I'm real happy about the way this pedal board worked out logistically you know with everything being able to fit in here and um, and it sounds great and it's working out great so far and it's so much lighter and easier to carry around I don't feel embarrassed showing up to gigs with this one as much okay um, so let's start with I'll just go, really briefly go over what the signal path is now and there's a lot of similarities but a few differences so just like before I'm going into the ZVEX fuzz factory first then directly out into the Exotic SP Compressor. Uh, love this one because it's got the mix control just like my old Wampler Ego did. I replaced the Wampler with this one because this one's smaller, obviously fits on the board better. Goes into the Exotic EP Booster, which I use solely as sort of a tone enhancer when I'm using more of a pop kind of a sound. Uh, then it goes into the newer blues mood, the low gain overdrive, then the zen drive, which is more the medium gain overdrive, and kind of my core overdrive sound if I'm using a sound for playing a solo, you know, to get a, a, a horn-like kind of a sound, I guess. Um, you'll notice that the old board had two vo volume pedals in a row here, and I've omitted one, which was the pedal that was full-time acting as a uh, uh, expression pedal for my delay, the old uh, Eventide Time Factor, which is no longer on the board. Um, and we'll talk about the replacement here in a minute. But now I've just got a volume pedal here. So, and uh, I forget if I mentioned this in the first video, but a volume pedal is really one of my essentials. I love being able to um, control the volume as I'm playing with my foot, not have to, you know, I know some people use their hand, their finger on the volume knob to do swells and, and just to change the volume as you're playing. But to me, it's much more convenient to be able to use my foot. Um, so I've, I've, I would say quite a bit of the time end up with my foot actually on the volume pedal, just doing slight volume changes. Um, if nothing else, just when I play a chord, and when I play a single note, the the uh, the output increases exponentially. 
So a lot of times if I'm playing, you know, chords, I'll bring the volume down and then bring the volume up for single notes. And of course that can happen in the middle of a phrase sometimes. So from there, um, of course I'm going out to the um, polytune here that I showed off in the previous video. Now it's on the board and um, it's, it's worked out really nicely. From there also, I, I believe next I go into the tremolo baby face, which I had on there before and then into the Electro Harmonics Hog, which I did a little demonstration of. Now, um, it's off camera right now, but I do have the controller pedal for the Hog. I got a little more, bit more robust one to use. That's this uh, Dunlop Volume X Mini uh, that's acting now as the controller pedal for the Hog, and I keep it off to the uh, right side of the board like that. And um, it works great. And so it's exactly the same pedal as this one. Um, okay, so from there I'm going into the, actually the Sweet 16 from there, which is mono in, mono out. And then from there I'm going, of course, mono out into, ta-da, my new pedal, and I'm loving this pedal. It does most of the same stuff that the Time Factor did and it, the the compromises that I have to make are just fine and it actually does some stuff that the time factor didn't do. Anyway, this is the Alexander Rewind. So I did a lot of online research, watched a lot of effects pedal videos and read, you know, articles and went to music stores in a couple of cases and checked out some pedals and this was th my clear winner. My requirements were that it had to have uh, stereo in and out and this one does. Um, of course, I'm not using the stereo in, but at least I definitely wanted the stereo out, and that um, took a, a bunch of pedals out of, you know, contention. Um, I also wanted to be able to use an expression pedal with it, and um, this one does, and as you can see, it, it just off the side, I have yet another one of these uh, Dunlop mini volume pedals as the expression pedal. When I first got the Alexander Rewind, I of course A-beat it with the um, time factor and I created, I tried to duplicate some of my presets, my favorite sort of delay preset. So if you listen really closely, you can just hear a little bit of delay. But now if I... And this is its lo-fi setting. So you can hear that it, the delays are a little bit kind of funky and crunchy and a little lo-fi sounding. And we'll come back to talking about this one more in detail in a minute, but let me just finish out the, uh, the end of the effects pedal chain. So I'm going from the rewind into my, of course, Big Sky Reverb. kind of my basic reverb setting, which is to, supposed to be emulating the Lexicon LXP1 as close as I could get it by A being the two pedals. And then finally at the end of the chain I've got my hologram microcosm here. One thing you may notice is on the old board the microcosm was at the top and the big sky was down at the bottom. What I realized once I got the thing on the board is I'm using the looper function quite a bit on this pedal, which is, you know, get, I get access from these uh, pedals. And so, let's say, stuff but anyway that it makes it so much easier to work the pedals with my feet when I'm in a normal setting um, not really able to do that right now because I'm sitting on the floor in front of my board here but anyway 
uh, that's definitely been a big boon to have easier access to the loop function pedals. Switches! 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 And, you know, some of the, the other stuff on the pedal to make the really crazy psychedelic sounds. It, it's kind of nice to have immediate access to that as well. The Big Sky, of course, is farther away now, but I don't usually do too much tweaking of the Big Sky while I'm playing. About the only thing that I really do is go from a switch among these three presets. My bigger reverb for ballady kind of things. And then my extreme reverb for the ending of a song maybe. But anyway, um, I, I can kind of still reach that with my foot, or sometimes, since I very almost always am sitting when I'm playing, I a lot of times just find myself reaching down and doing it with my hands. A lot of the, the functions that I use on the pedal board, I find that I kind of split 50-50 between using my hands and using my feet, because again, I am sitting, so it's not that big of a deal to bend over and, and hit a button or a knob or something with one of my hands. Um, but it depends on the situation. You know, if I'm in the middle of playing something and I want to change the sound, then it's nice to be able to use my foot. Okay, so that's basically my signal path. Um, I guess I didn't, the one thing I didn't mention is the uh, remote control for the hog, but that's what that is that changes patches. I mentioned that in the last video. So anyway, let, let's get into the uh, Alexander Rewind a little bit. So again, this video is not meant to be a... Um, complete exploration of this or any other pedal. It's just specifically how I use this in sort of a, what you might call a modern jazz setting. So this is, uh, again, just kind of my straight ahead jazz tone. Reverb and just that little touch of delay from the rewind. Again, you can barely even hear it, but just barely there in the background to give that extra little uh, sort of pad. And then I can always bring in a little bit more. Maybe at the, you know, if I play a sustained chord, I wanna be doing that with my foot. And um, as usual, I'm playing my Conklin 8 string. You can see the headstock there. Um, and that's 99.999% .999 of the time what I use with this pedal board. So let's go on a little tour of the Alexander Rewind and kind of see uh, what's similar and what's different. So we've already seen this main patch that I'm using. And now you can hear what's going on. Here, I'll brighten my tone up a little bit too. So you can probably hear that there's a little bit of modulation on the delays, like a little pitch bend. It's pretty slight, but it's an, just, just a hint of it to give you that little pitch, I guess chorusing effect, you could say. But again, it's kind of like the, the non-chorus chorus. Okay, so that's my sort of basic go-to delay sound. And I'd say 90% of the time, that's what I'm using with this delay for, is just for that. So. If that was the only thing I was using it for, I could just use a, you know, a Boss digital delay, one of, you know, nothing fancy, but I do like having the possibility of some other things. So let's go through a few of the other sounds that I've kind of come up with, and maybe I'll walk you through a little bit of the, the other possibilities for programming. But again, you know, I'm not going to get into the real nitty gritty of all the things that this pedal can do. Um, but let's see, I'm going to go to another 
patch that I made, which is based on an analog delay. Maybe a slightly shorter delay time on this one, although obviously I can change that with either tap tempo. Now this one I have, the, 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 my main delay, I've got the tap tempo set to just do quarter notes. I, again, 99% of the time I don't even touch the tap tempo on that one. I just kind of leave it for that kind of medium length delay setting. But every once in a while I may want to change the delay time. On this one I may change it because I have this one set up for the dotted eighth setting, you know, kind of the classic. I've entered more into kind of a pop sounding territory. So I'm going to kick on my kind of pop rig here. Basically, you know, I'm borrowing the kinds of tones that I might use on a rock or a pop gig, but using them, maybe the, the harmonies are a little bit different than I might use on a pop gig there. Um, it depends, you know, but I, I do a lot of um, versions of some of my favorite pop music, like the Beatles and Neil Young and Pink Floyd, stuff like that, and sort of uh, injects some sort of jazz harmony into that stuff and some jazz concepts and that's the kind of stuff that I'm more likely to use a sound like this for. Alright so anyway um, the other kind of cool thing about this uh, when we get into the the controls here you can see there's four knobs and one thing that's kind of cool is even though this is you know programmable which means you've got presets and everything uh, these knobs are immediately accessible this is the mix, and I can put it to all wet, which is nice to have that option. A lot of a lot of pedals in this kind of range do not have that as an option. I've um, got the delay time. Some of these crazy psychedelic kind of sounds doesn't quite. Uh, do like an old analog delay would, or like this pedal will. Notice that it sort of corrects itself eventually, but that's okay because that's not really why I bought this pedal is to get those sounds. And then of course the feedback or repeats. You can get some of that runaway stuff with this, but again, that's not really what I got this for. Tone, which of course, um, then if, and then for the um, modulation, you've got a bunch of different choices here. Uh, you can have a sine wave. Here, I'll make the. That's obviously ridiculous, but just so you can really hear the sine wave. Here's a square wave. And then we have up. Down. We have random. And then 
fixed. It just stays there. So this is kind of an interesting sound that I got uh, from tweaking a few of these settings. I took the time all the way to zero, the uh, repeats all the way to zero, and then put the mix all the way to wet. And then I move over to the um, uh, modulation section and I put it on square wave, turn the uh, depth all the way up and the rate kind of low, and I get this kind of sound. You just hear that random weirdness of the pitch suddenly he's shifting and it actually reminded me a little bit of some of the sounds that Mary Halverson uses sometimes not not really the same as what she does and not really the same way that she gets it I don't think but that was sort of a poor person's Mary Halverson I thought but that's not a preset that I made I just was messing around with that this this is an example of some of the the things that you can do with this pedal that actually don't involve really echo at all so I put it on the filter setting and I again turn the um, the delay time to zero and the repeats to zero and I'm basically just using the uh, controller to change the filter and it gets kind of synthy kind of filter again not really something I would use that often but it's kind of fun to have every once in a while and what else have I got on here this is another sort of very similar to my main delay sound and then finally there's there's one preset that I wanted to talk about a little bit which is this ping pong setting it's set to a stereo delay you can hear that on either side and the stereo side one side set for quarter notes and the other side set for dotted eighths and if I bring up the level put on some reverb So now that's not exactly the same as that patch that I showed in the uh, Eventide Time Factor that I said I was really going to miss, but it's the closest I've been able to come to getting a similar kind of sound. One one thing that is hip about the Time Factor is it's a, it's got dual delays on every algorithm, every patch, no matter what. This one you have to go to the dual uh, algorithm actually to get that. That's the only one that has like the the uh, stereo kind of delay that I just showed that patch that I made all the other ones the only kind of stereo is with the modulation aspect um, you know the like the chorus on the analog delay for example and just to demonstrate the the kind of stereo aspect of the um, of the modulation I thought I'd here I'll turn the overdrive off so you can kind of hear that stereo spread and again that's much more extreme than I would normally use but that makes it easy to hear the stereo aspect different kind of chorus effects in each side so it gives you that wider kind of stereo feel anyway I'll go back to the the way the preset is set up it's more 
subtle, but still nice to have that little hint of kind of stereo-ness. But other than that, you know, that you don't get too much in terms of back and forth between your right and left side of the stereo field. So I'll, I'll take you just really briefly through all the algorithms that you have. So I go into the first screen here with the, the um, page menu button and I can go from tape thing about the tape is it's got these different heads you know an old tape delay had uh, record heads and this is a B B and a and B C oh sorry a and C B and C a, B, and C, D, A and D, B and D, A, B and D, C and D, A, C, D, and finally, oh, B, C, D, and I think, there we go, finally all four. So, and then with the tape delay, you've also got wow and flutter. I'll go back to more. Tape age. Which basically brings the highs down. And then the wow and flutter is basically like your modulation. I don't really use the tape delay all that often. I don't know, I've, I've always favored more the the kind of old digital sound or the analog sound. So that's the one I, those two are the ones I tend to go with. So anyway, next is analog, which we already kind of went through. Uh, digital, so this is set to be totally just clean. But now if I turn this all the way up, hear how it's kind of crunchy and lo-fi sounding. And then I've got the different modulation, just like with the analog delay. On to pitch. This is an interesting one. The, uh, the, the time factor does not have this. So this is set to an octave below at the moment, and you can change that. So I can set this one to an octave above as well. And then I can set the, uh, the mode for pre, which you can hear as the delay trails off, it raises up an octave every time. Not an effect I'm gonna really use that much, um, but you can actually, again, do a little trick of turning the time and the repetitions down all the way to the mix, up all the way to wet. And it becomes a pitch shifter. Um, not the most amazing sounding pitch shifter ever, but should you ever want that, it's there. Then we have diffuse, which kind of, it kind of imitates reverb a little bit. I probably wouldn't use that one that much. Um, Reverse. This one, I'm, I'm going to wait on this one to talk about it because I've got a preset for this one. Dynamic, which is uh, supposed to, you know, bring the volume of the delay down when you're playing and then come back up when you're not playing. I haven't even, I, I'm not really that interested in that and I haven't really messed around with it, so I'm not going <laughs> to show it off here. And then another algorithm, Lo-Fi, which is what I use my main delay sound for. Uh, it gives you, again, kind of that crunchy old style digital sound. Um, aside from time, repeats, and mix in the first screen, and then you go to the next screen, you get dirt, and then tone. So both of those, you know, affect the tone of the delay. I never tried this before, but let's see what happens if I do the old trick of turning the delay and the repeats and the all the way to wet, and then just mess around with the actual tone. Kind of 
gives you some overdrive there. So I wouldn't really use that for much, but it's there if you should ever want it. So that's kind of all the different algorithms. And then finally, one last preset that I created is this reverse. And uh, I've demonstrated the reverse delay in the time factor. So, hey, great, it does that. So what, you know, the time factor does the same thing. But one thing that was always frustrating about the time factor is if I turn the reverse effect on, it shut off the dry signal and there'd just be silence for a second. So if I'm in the middle of a solo and I'm playing along and I, you know, I want to... I get that little awkward area of silence. Well, this has a feature where you can ch you can adjust the balance between the dry and the wet signal uh, with the pedal. So I've got the pedal all the way to the up position. So it's not like I'm waiting for the effect to kick on, it's actually already in there. The stuff that I'm playing is already being processed, it's just not, you're not hearing it when I have the pedal down this way. And that's really cool, that's, that's something that was always kind of a frustration with the time factor, I couldn't do that. So you can use this just as a regular delay echo, but the echoes are backwards, you know. I think I demonstrated a, a patch of that with the time factor. Anyway, one other thing that the time factor would do, and I haven't been able to get this one to do it, is with the reverse delay, if you turned it to a really short delay time and a long uh, uh, feedback, you could get this almost like a ring modulator kind of a sound that was really cool. And um, I, haven't, I can't really get the same sound with this one. It, it sounds not even really in the ballpark. So here's like the closest I could get with this pedal. Let's see if I add some. But it's not really the same thing. Um, you know, the, the note the note that you play is the note that you hear, whereas with the old pedal it was doing more of a real ring modulation thing where it would be like a couple of pitches mixed together and it just, it was really cool. So that's, it's a small price to pay to have, you know, this tiny little thing taking up hardly any space that allows me to have this small board. One other thing that I, I didn't mention before that is kind of a downside of having this pedal on the front of the board is I don't know if you can see it, but there's two cables plugged in right here. And um, it's actually kind of a, that's my main output of the pedal board in the middle of the <laughs> board. So it, it, these are not right angle cables that I have plugged in right now. And in order to plug, even plug them in, I actually have to pull this pedal off the board a little bit to get them to fit. Um, normally what I do on gigs is I just use cables that have a right angle but I, I'm using longer cables than normal right now because um, I've got my amps in the other room. I didn't mention this before, but um, I decided to go ahead and, and do a little bit more elaborate setup today than I did with the first video where I'm actually playing through two amps and I've got the amps mic'd up. So you're hearing a, a more faithful version of what you know I would sound like playing on a gig, particularly with the overdrive sounds, which. I should probably sample the main overdrive sound a little bit for that reason. Um. Thank you. 
And now, what do you say I just play around with some of the pedals for a second? So I hope this has been enjoyable and informative and uh, be sure to stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be talking about some different reverb pedals and you'll have to watch the next one to find out exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.